Okay guys, it has that time again where it is time to come to Madrid and find an apartment. Hide your wife, hide your kids. The silly artists are coming. I've already made a video about some tips of how you can find an apartment in Madrid. I do recommend you check it out here. That video, the editing is very bad. But the information is still accurate and that's why I do recommend you check it out. I will be making a three-part series about how to find an apartment in Madrid without going insane. And so stay tuned to the other two parts of this video. Okay, so the first place that people really like to live is in Puerto de Sol. Sol is the centermost point in Madrid that you can possibly be. This is where the Madrid center starts, this is where the pub crawls start, and this is where most people like to meet up. People love to live in Sol because it's lively, it's well connected, there's always something to do, and it's just the busy bustle and hustle of Sol. Some cons, in my opinion, about living in Seoul is the typical city living life. The noise, the trash, the drunk people, all these things that you that come with living in a city is what you're gonna get living in Seoul. It's also extremely expensive. You're gonna pay probably between around 450 to maybe 700 for a room. Seoul is also famous for having apartments that have 10 different rooms, no living room, and they're all rented out to students and foreigners, and you'll pay around 450 to about 600 euros per room. My second place on the list is La Latina. La Latina is also located in Madrid. People love living in La Latina for the food scene, the nightlife, and the whole eclectic feel of La Latina. Some great pros of La Latina is there's lots of bars and clubs that you can go to so you're surrounded by that kind of bar culture. Some cons for me to living in La Latina is the green line is not as fast, but you're still right in the center, so it's easy to get anywhere. And also for me, this is Foreigner Central. This is where all the tourists go. La Latina is on every single what to do in Madrid guide. So there's lots of times where you're in bars or in a restaurant and you're only listening to English. So it's not that big of a deal, but for me, this is kind of taking away from my Spanish abroad experience. The third place on my list is Malasaña. Malasaña includes Tribunal, Chueca, and Novesiat. Malasaña is known for its hipster artsy vibe. This is usually where all the artists of Madrid live. It's also a very young crowd where you have mostly students and people under the age of 35 live. There's also a lot of very open-minded people and you will meet people from all different kinds of personalities, especially people that are kind of like going away from the mainstream crowd and they like to do their own type of thing is you will meet those types of people in Malasaña. Some cons of living in Malasaña is kind of the obvious like all the other places. It's noisy, it's hella expensive, like hella expensive. My friend pays 900 euros to live in a box in Malasaña. So, it's expensive in my opinion. Where are these Spanish people that are paid $4,000 a month that can afford these hella expensive rent? I don't know. I don't know, where are they? Going off of Malasaña is Chueca. It's a little bit special because this area is the LGBT community. And I do recommend that if you are a homosexual coming to Madrid to live, this area is just amazing. It has such a great support system. There's literally everything is gay pride. You'll just feel so much at home. You'll meet friends. Also, my ladies out there, if you're looking for somewhere to go out and party, Chueca is the best. One, you're not gonna be getting groped all night long. Two, you have beautiful men to look at. And three, they play the best music. So, Chueca for going out. My fourth location on this list is Lava Pies. Lava Pies is right in the center of Madrid. And people love living in Lava Pies because of the diversity of the food, how cheap it is, and also just how lively it is and how well connected it is as well. I personally love Lava Pies. If I still lived in the center of Madrid, I would live in this area. Some cons about living in Lava Pies is kind of like the other things. It's loud, it's dirty. There is a lot of cat calling in Lava Pies. Calling, cat calling, cat calling. 
and it's a little annoying, but you get used to it. Also, people do sell marijuana on the streets, but I'd rather marijuana than guns, so that's just me. And they have a 24-hour grocery store, which, trust me, is very, very convenient. That is really convenient. My fifth and my favorite area is Puente de Vallecas. Puente de Vallecas, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated barrios in Madrid. People love living in Puente de Vallecas because it's cheap, it's right outside of the center, it's well connected, and it's quiet. I personally live in Puente de Vallecas. I absolutely love it. We have a pretty decent apartment for a fraction of the price that we'd be paying in the center of Madrid, and we're literally one stop outside of the center, and we're still so close to everything. Another underrated area that you should check out in Madrid is Cuatro Caminos. In my opinion, it's a very affordable area. It's diverse, it's cheap, and you're still in the center and well-connected, and I think a lot of people look over these areas. Some other areas that I did not mention was Tirso de Molina, Arco Martin, Atocha, and Embajadores. All these places kind of merge together. They're all in the center. They're all kind of similar as far as like in the center. A little expensive, but I, Tirso de Molina is a little bit cheaper. I will put all of these names in the description, so don't worry about it. So that's all I have for you guys today. What areas do you like to live in and what areas do you like in Madrid? Please comment down in the comment box and let me know. And I will see you guys in the next video, which will be about once you already have where you want to live, how do you actually go about finding a specific apartment? And once you have, once you get to the apartment, what do you say and how do you close the deal? Okay, thanks very much. I will see you in the next video. Bye.